triple pH. It has a unique injection technique uh, compared to the other polyacrylamides, a fine multi-line injections with complete integration into the tissue. It's non-allergenic, non-migrational, and there's been extensive clinical testing. Uh, it has a unique patented technology. It's a sterile, transparent hydrogel. It has 97.5% water and 2.5% cross-linked polyacrylamide. Water is bound to this patented form of polyacrylamide. It's non-absorbable, non-biodegradable, and it, this is important. It exchanges water, salt, and organic molecules with the host tissue. So this unique technology ensures a high biocompatibility and excellent aesthetic results. And here you can see, as you go from one to four, that uh, you get this nice little network formation within the gel. It has a very good safety profile. There's a lot of clinical experience. There have been more than uh, 10 clinical studies performed. There's up to a five-year follow-up for both aesthetic and facial lipoatrophy indications. There's more than 5,000 uh, patients treated in the clinical studies. It has long-lasting results, uh, more than 95% of patient and physician satisfaction at five-year follow-up uh, in the European multicenter trial. The uh, safety surveillance shows complications in less than one to 1,000 syringes, so that's less than a tenth percent. And most complications seem to be infections, which can be treated by antibiotics, which should be initiated as soon as possible. So you have to think about this, as, an, as uh, uh, Mark Nesta said, as an injectable implant. And I think if you think of it this way, uh, then you'll understand it a lot better. So there's over 400,000 syringes injected worldwide, and it's been on the market uh, for 10 years. It can be used in all the usual areas, including the lips. It can be used for volumizing on the nose uh, and the nasolabial fold, which is where the U.S. study uh, was done on the nasolabial fold. Now, the problem with uh, the uh, polyacrylamides is that uh, in the U.S. today, they, they want to lump all HAs together, and all HAs are not the same. Well, neither are all polyacrylamides the same. And so many of the complications are written up as polyacrylamide complications, but they are not due to Aquamid. The great majority are due to amazing gel in the breasts from China. I'm going to go through this in a minute, or bioalchemid. People get very mixed up with the name. I once gave a lecture on Aquamid, and the first question was, how long have you used bioalchemid? And so what happens is that uh, people are mixed up with the name and with the product, and all hydrogels are not the same. So the, uh, there is an article that I published in Drugs and Dermatology uh, this past uh, December, and it shows that these uh, polyacrylamides are not the same. Uh, the manufacturing processes, which has a significant uh, impact on the chemical and physical properties and its consistencies, are different. The injection technique and the volume injected has a significant impact on tissue interaction with the implant and the ability to promote infections, and they are not injected the same. The volume isn't the same. The safety of these polyacrylamides is determined based on a combination of the chemical and physical properties, the stability, the reliability of the product, as well as the implantation technique. For instance, uh, uh, the bioalchemid is also called Perform, is composed of polymers of alchemide units. Evolution, which is composed of polyvinyl microspheres, and it is suspended in an uh, acrylamide polymer. Aquamid, on the other hand, is composed solely of cross-linked polyacrylamide. So chemically, they're not the same. There are other polyacrylamides which appeared in the early 90s, uh, invented and patented in the Ukraine, and a number of very similar and maybe the same preparations emerged, formacryl, bioformacryl, cosmogel, argiform in Russia, amazing gel in China, and many of these products have changed their names over the years, so you're not sure which one it is. So why is this important? Because the rate and severity of the complications of the other polyacrylamides differs greatly from the experience with Aquamid. 
And a recent comprehensive world literature review on the subject shows that there is a negative perception of these polyacrylamides, and it's based on the uh, serious adverse events with these products, which are injected as a bolus with large volume, like amazing gel in the breasts in China. There's a lot of articles on that. As a um, assistant editor of the Journal of, of Dermatologic Surgery, I recently received an article just saying polyacrylamide with some horrendous complications, and of course it was not Aquamid. So we made them actually use the name, which you know the FDA only wants us to use the generic name, but it's incorrect here because they aren't the same product. So the quality of the published studies is generally very poor for the other polyacrylamides compared to Aquamid. Uh, and the incidence of adverse events is much lower with Acromid because it's injected as thin strands and it interacts with the tissue. It is the only polyacrylamide that is uh, approach, uh, that is uh, being um, uh, going through the FDA now in the U.S. market, the uh, clinical trial uh, being finished a while ago. So let's talk about some of the characteristics of these other products. The elasticity modulus is pretty stable for Aquamid, but you can see it's all over the place with BioAlchemid and with Amazing Gel. Uh, BioAlchemid is also very acidic and irritating to the tissue. Uh, it has a lot of uh, sulfate when it degrades. The needle size is different. Aquamid can be injected through a 25 or a 27 gauge needle. Bioalchemid, you're up to a 14 to 18 gauge and the same for amazing gel. Aquamid, as I said, is multi-lined strands and the others are injected as a large bolus uh, with a high volume. So both of the Bioalchemid and amazing gel tend to be encapsulated whereas Aquamid has uh, uh, fibrous tissue and vessel ingrowth and actually becomes part of the tissue. The polyacrylamides are like sponges, and they have a difference in their pore structure, and the pore structure is related to the ratio of acrylamide monomer and crosslinker, the catalyst, and the method of polymerization. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you some electron microscopy images of three polyacrylamides so that you can see the differences in their morphology. And the, this different geometry of this structure shows why Aquamid allows the ingrowth of cells while the others don't allow this ingrowth and become encapsulated. So this is Aquamid, uh, and this is a cryo-frozen fractured Aquamid, and you can see that uh, the pore structure is pretty regular. Uh, the, one, the, uh, on your right, it's um, higher magnification. Uh, it's pretty regular, and uh, it isn't that small, so it allows ingrowth of the fibrous tissue. This is bioalchemid. You can see that the pores are much smaller, but it is, um, it is uh, uneven, and the size of the pores uh, are not even. It's really very chaotic. And this is amazing gel. It's even more chaotic, and, um, and these things tend to stay as uh, boluses, and uh, uh, the fibrous tissue cannot uh, get into the tissue, uh, get into the uh, implant. The, uh, we have aspirates of amazing gel, uh, bioalchemid and aquamid that have been sampled more than two years after they were injected. Actually, we have aquamid out for two, five, and ten years because it's pretty easy to remove should you have to. But the, uh, I'm going to show you how the amazing gel has thick, angulated, differently sized homogeneous fragments with no signs of vessel in growth. Uh, bioalchemid is more even but uh, still dense fragments with no sign of vessel in growth. And the Aquamid, uh, you can see rounded, interconnecting homogeneous structures, and tissue integration is achieved through delicate fibrous network in growth. So you can see the amazing gel and the, all of the uh, various sizes of the gel. It's the blue stuff on your left. And bioalchemid is a little more even. They're smaller fragments, but neither one has any uh, in growth. Uh, this is bioalchemid. You can see it's encapsulated, and there's a tremendous number of inflammatory cells. And this is Aquamid two years out. Uh, there's fibrous tissue. There's blood vessel in growth. There's no inflammatory cells. And this, again, is Aquamid two years later. And you can see it's well integrated into the tissue. Now, this is Aquamid at five years. Uh, number A is an H&E section, 
and you can see that it's integrated into the tissue. B and D is a stain for fibrous tissue, and you can see that there's fibrous tissue within the, um, within the gel. And number C is for macrophages, and there's little or no macrophage reaction. Uh, this is Aquamid injected 10 years and nine months previously. Uh, the doctor said the injected area was smooth and soft. You can see blood vessels and thin strands of connective tissue in the gel. So in conclusion, a number of tissue fillers rely on polyacrylamide technology. There are structural and physical chemical differences. Method of manufacturing is different different injection techniques, and this accounts for the diverse safety profile of these fillers. And in contrast with other non-degradable fillers, Aquamid, uh, with its unique and orderly geometry, becomes intimately integrated within the host tissues, and it ensures a highly natural aesthetic result with few side effects. It stays soft to the touch over time, and it does not give rise to an extensive foreign body reaction or tissue calcifications.